So what if we really needed places for billions of people, five, five billion people or more? How much land on Earth would it actually take? If you take the world surface area, represented as dots, compress it to uh, uh, a rectangle like this, and then ask, suppose people could move into places like Hong Kong, so Hong Kong-like densities. How much land uh, would it take to create urban areas for 8 billion people? It turns out it's a tiny fraction of the surface area on the Earth. And there's an enormous amount of land on Earth, which is right now very underutilized, not suitable for agriculture, but could easily be used to create these new urban, uh, urban spots. So finding the land uh, would really be no challenge in carrying out a program like this, even at scale. The challenge will be for us to rethink things that we've taken for granted about rules and how rules change, how people opt into them and opt out, how they control them, what options they have, and what kinds of arrangements countries can enter into about what to do within their own borders, what ways existing countries can uh, work together to create new kinds of arrangements that transfer rule, technology, rule systems as well as technologies across borders. So there's really nothing but certain kinds of presumptions and uh, emotional reactions that hold us back from doing something that could be terribly important for helping people throughout the world catch up and potentially even keeping technology going at the frontier. There's a, there's a law that's referred to as Cardwell's Law that says that no nation remains technologically innovative for long. We've been able to enjoy continued accelerating economic uh, growth and technological innovation, but only because that process of innovation has been able to move to different places across the globe. Now, we'd like to believe that the United States will remain the worldwide leader forever into the, the far future, but if you take uh, the long now time frame seriously of the next 10,000 years, history doesn't give you a lot of confidence that any nation, even the United States, can remain the technological leader. But if there's still some potential for new places to emerge, new systems to be tried, places where new people can go, often young, innovative people, uh, the ambitious people who moved into Holland, this may be important not just in helping uh, the rest of the world catch up, but even keeping innovation going at faster and faster rates out at the, out at the cutting edge. So there's a, there's a big challenge in, re, in just getting ourselves to rethink what's possible, what we could do, but there's an, an enormous amount at stake here. This map uh, zeroes in on, on Africa, which is the other part of the world which right, right now stands out as being very, very devoid of light. There's very limited uh, GDP, very limited opportunities for people to, to, consume, uh, to consume light there. And if you want a picture to remember about what that means in terms of the quality of life, remember this picture. This is a picture of students in Guinea reading their textbooks at the airport because this was the only place where they could get light at night to do their, to do their schoolwork. It's a solved technical problem about how to generate electricity and get it to homes so students don't have to go sit at the airport to read their books. And it's a solved, tech, it's a solved political social problem to create rules that can lead to the implementation of those technical systems that get light to these, uh, to these kinds of uh, young people. So as you evaluate this theory of history and this, this application, and you run up against the inevitable reaction that we could never create new countries. You could never have an agreement to set aside a piece of territory and create something like a Hong Kong. You could never have a place where people opt in and opt out, uh, but where uh, the political control might be from a very different location. But as you think about all of, those, all of those objections, think about explaining it to one of these kids and telling them why we think the best solution is for you to just spend as long as it takes, you know, maybe another thousand years, as in China, to wait for somehow your own internal systems of rules to transform so you can get access to the kinds of things that we, we take for granted. Thanks.